thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, and while we're in this attitude, Lord, of closeness with you, fellowship with you, yes, we just bring those, we bring Etienne to you, Father, this this afternoon, Lord. Oh, yes, Father. And we thank you, Father, for your healing thank hand you. on yes, him. Lord, strengthening yes, those kidneys in oh, Jesus' yes, name. Lord. In yes, Jesus' Father, name. Yes, and um, what was that lady, Bridget, asked us to pray for? It certainly looks like she was in here. Yes. Yeah. And that lady, that, that Bridget and knows. Lana as well. Lana's was it Lana? Lana's, Lana's praying. Friend. COVID, yes. Yeah, Father, we just pray. Father, all these people that we've yes, been asked Lord, to pray for yes, Father, with COVID, we got their names in the Father book. God, we yes, pray for Lord, them every day. You, you Father, know them, Lord. Yes, and Father, Lord. we thank you. Your hand is on thank them, you, restoring thank them, you, healing Father, them, strengthening them. them. In the you name Father, of God, Jesus. Just thank you for that. Hallelujah. 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 COVID, we tell you now in the name of Jesus, you will bow your knee to the name of Jesus. We command you to dissipate, to go and leave this land in Jesus' name. Come on, church, you need to take action against COVID. You need to be violent against him with your prayer. And you must tell him to go. Exercise your authority. Go in the name of Jesus. That's right, in Jesus' name. And it cannot attach itself to you when you fight in the spirit. Yes. And address COVID with the word of God. It has to flee in the name of Jesus. It cannot attach itself to you. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Jesus Amen. mighty Amen. name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Phone everybody. Get them here. Let's have church. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And amen. Do you want to pray? So, Father God, we come before you and we bring the service before you, yes, Father amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord. For your anointing on the service, Father, that you are a prayer answering Father. And we just thank you, Lord. You will open up our spiritual eyes to see and hear your word and do your word, Father God. We thank you for signs and wonders to accompany the ministry, Father God. We thank you, Lord. The blind eyes will open, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear, Father God. And those that need creative miracles, Father, you'll give them to them in Jesus' name, Father. We stand in agreement with your word. We stand in agreement on the child of Jesus. Our people have been healed in my home. In Jesus' name. Expect your miracle. Expect God to come through for you. you, Don't give up. Push forward. Push Thank forward you, with the word of God. Because Thank God will you. hear you and he will deliver you from yes. your sickness and disease. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Father God, I can't share this message without you Holy Spirit so I thank you that you have filled me, you're here with me I feel your presence, I know you're here in Jesus mighty name Lord and I thank you I will deliver this with all boldness and authority but it will bring revelation to the listeners in Jesus Jesus name, Father not anything of me but everything of you Lord Lord. it's all about you it's not about us Father, we put the flesh under in Jesus mighty name Amen, 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 Amen Amen. Praise God. Well, I hope you're in for a bit of a treat this afternoon. I hope you get some revelation out of this. There's a lot of things that aren't clear in the Bible and and um, uh, and, and it causes a lot of arguments. For instance, uh, when we're going to get raptured, are we going to get raptured at the begin, beginning of the tribulation, mid-tribulation, or at the end of the tribulation, and uh, other things as well. And... Um, there's questions that we get asked about gender and sexuality and things like that. We must always remember that God hates the sin, but he loves, he loves the sinner. The sinner. That's right. And somebody said to me the other day, that's not true, but it is true. Because God so loved the world. He, and the Bible even tells us, yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Tell me that that's not love. That's right. Absolutely. And, uh, but we will see, and you can learn so much from what I'm going to share with you today, and I'm going to share with you today uh, Jesus in the traditional ancient Jewish wedding. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Very exciting. Now, Jesus was born a Jew in Israel, and uh, without the Jewish nation, we wouldn't have the Old Testament, and perhaps we wouldn't even know of the need for a Messiah without God having created Israel. And Israel having gone through what she went through. And, uh, and we can learn a lot from that. 
Not long ago I told about the four cups of the Passover table, I suppose it must be a year or two ago now. But I taught on the four cups of the Passover table where we saw the fourth cup. We looked at the first cup, the second cup, the third cup, and I, can't, I haven't got time to go through them because this is quite long. I don't even know if I'll get all this in today. Might have to carry on next week. Mm -hmm. But um, we saw there that the fourth cup, the last cup, had implications for the non-believer and for the Jew and for the Christian. So the fourth cup of the Passover table had implications for the non-believer, for the Jew, and for the Christian. And we say that this fourth cup was known as a cup of consummation for the Christian. And you understand why just now? Because we're going to look at the wedding of the bridegroom, Jesus, and his bride, the church, and the consummation of that wedding. We're going to look at that hopefully this afternoon or we'll finish it off next week. But the fourth cup was known as the cup of consummation for the Christian. But now for the Jew, it was known as the cup of Elijah. Hmm. And it was known as the cup of Elijah because they believe he would appear to announce the coming of the Messiah. But there was also an implication for the non-believer. And they think we're talking rubbish. <laughs> but there was an implication for the non-believer. And for the unbeliever, it's the cup of wrath. Mm, mm, mm. Because at that period of time, which is represented by that cup of consummation, and which is during the tribulation period, God pours out his wrath on the unbeliever. Not the church. The church is out of here. That's right. On the unbeliever. I wish I had time to spend so much time on all this. but And we saw then, when we were looking at that, we saw that we're now actually living between the time of the third cup, which is known as the cup of redemption, mm -hmm. and the cup, this fourth cup, which I've said to you, is known as the cup of consu consummation. And that's when the wedding of the bride... Known in the scriptures as a church, and you see that just now, and the bridegroom also revealed as Jesus in the scriptures, that would be consummated. That wedding of Jesus and the church would be consummated at the wedding feast, where we, as believers who have been snatched away in the rapture, will drink of this cup. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Remember Jesus. I said to you there's be a peace treaty and all the rest of it and a few things yeah. that the Bible says have to occur and uh, when this happens Jesus will come back on the clouds the same way as he left according to the book of Acts right. and the church, God, Jesus, his bride will be snatched away. Right. Hallelujah. And we'll meet with him in the clouds. And those who've already gone to sleep will be raised up. That's right. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' Thank name we will Jesus. all meet in the clouds with Jesus and what will happen is we'll go into heaven and here on earth will come a period of seven years known as the tribulation while we're in heaven and while we're in heaven we go before the judgment seat of Christ where we receive the rewards and uh, and the accolades if you like for the things that we've done for Jesus and all this and then we go through the wedding feast and we have this time of consummation, which you're going to hear more about just now. But I want to start off today by going to Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, at this stage, I'm going to look at Ephesians 5 later on in more detail. I just want to read to you from verse 32. In this portion of Ephesians chapter 5, here it speaks about... Um, the natural wedding, the natural bride and groom. Yeah. And it gives an illustration of that marriage. Remember when I've done marriage counseling for the people we married? Yes. And, and I've told them, it's God hates divorce, That's according right. to Malachi. Yeah. And the reason God hates divorce is because the wedding and marriage of a man and a woman, yes. man and a woman, that marriage is an illustration of the marriage of Jesus, the bridegroom, yes. the Bible calls him, yes, and right. the church, the bride, right. male and female. Yes, that's right. Marriage, it's, it's, it's an illustration of that. 
And if there was a, when there's a divorce, especially with believers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's therefore an illustration of that union and that marriage being torn apart. Now, if it's an illustration of Jesus and the church getting married, then the divorce would be an illustration of Jesus and the church getting wrenched apart. And that can never happen. That's why God hates divorce. But we'll look at that in more detail another time. But in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 32, after Paul, the Apostle Paul has explained all this in his letter to the Ephesians, he says in verse 32, This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. He's just been speaking about, uh, for instance, in verse 34, he says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. And the two shall become one flesh. That's right. Then he goes on and he says, This is a great mystery. You see the wedding, the marriage of a man and a woman as an illustration of the marriage of Jesus and the church, it's a great mystery. And it causes marriage union of Christ and the church a great mystery. And as we only touch on the study of this, we will see some of this mystery unfold in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Are you excited? Are you ready to hear it? In Jesus' name. You see, Jesus will be consummated at the wedding feast where we will all drink of the cup of consummation. Consummation is a celebration where, where, where um, a, a husband and a wife, they come together, they become one flesh, yes. then they've con consummated yes. their, their right. marriage Amen. in Jesus' name. Every wedding is consummated when the bridegroom comes to his bride and they become one flesh. Now, failure to consummate a marriage was grounds for divorce. And still, in some countries today, it is still grounds for divorce in Jesus' name. Well, not in Jesus' name, but... Yeah. Our consummation will take place towards the end of the tribulation. I just want to read to you from Revelation chapter 19 so you understand this. Revelation chapter 19. Stay awake, stay with me. You're going to learn something good this afternoon. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. And it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, that's the church, has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Praise God. And as I said to you, Ephesians chapter 5 calls all this a mystery. And we all participate in the wedding supper. So now we're going to examine this ancient traditional Jewish wedding. And we're going to see how it relates in particular to the return of Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. Which means, my Lord Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, first, we need to understand one or two things as we lay a foundation. We first have to understand that the Bible refers to Jesus as the bridegroom and the church as the bride. So let's go back to that opening scripture of Ephesians chapter 5. It is here. It's earlier than what I thought, but uh, it's good. Because it's all part of the foundation. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Stay with me. Stay awake. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Now, I'm not going to be today uh, picking on wives or picking on husbands or picking on children. That's going to come in another uh, time when we talk about the Christian family. Mm -hmm. And there's no picking on anybody. Right. It's just revealing what the word I says. Yeah. But here in verse 23 yeah. of Ephesians chapter 5, sorry, verse 22, it says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. So you need to submit to your husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. It's beginning to give us a comparison here. 
And he is the saviour of the body. Verse 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Not somebody else's husband, yeah, your own husband. That's right, yes, amen. amen. As in everything. And verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church. Here's this comparison again. And gave himself for her. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her to himself a glorious church. Now, you just know, we were talking about wives. Now, we're com compa it's comparing that natural marriage between a male and a female, man and a woman, with Jesus and the church. And it says here that he might present for himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Catch this? So husbands ought to have their own wives, mm -hmm. sorry, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. Yeah. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Comparison again. Mm. Verse 30. For we are members of his body. Mm. Whose body? The body of Jesus. Right. Of his flesh and of his bones. We make up his body here on earth. We're his flesh. We're his bones. We're his mouthpiece. And verse 31, for this reason, for that reason, mm -hmm. a man shall leave his father and mother mm -hmm. and be joined to his wife, right. and the two shall become one Blue. flesh. That's right. That's right. God requires a man yes. to leave his mother and father and to be joined to his wife, a woman, and the two become one flesh. Mm -hmm. And now some people might argue mm -hmm. uh, um, who have difficulty about genderism and all these things, they might argue about that and say, no, but it's not applying today. You're going to see very much so Amen. through this Jewish traditional Amen. wedding yeah. that that is truth. Yes. And anything else is abomination yeah, to God. Right. But Absolutely. we're not going down that road. We're not we judging are. anybody. We are loving people in Jesus' name. And Paul says, this is a great mystery. And I speak concerning Christ and the church. You see, I said to you earlier on that Jesus was born a Jew. And I can tell you now, a lot of the things that Jesus did, most of the things that Jesus did, the parables he spoke, the teachings he gave, it was all motivated by his Jewish traditions. I can tell you now, it was all motivated by his Jewish traditions. Let's just go across to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to look at a few scriptures today, so keep your Bible handy and your pen handy. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 says, For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. This is the Apostle Paul. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Paul is talking to the church in Corinthia, in Corinth. And then let's go over to John chapter 3, back, I should say, to John chapter 3. And verse 28. And in John the Baptist, he said, John, uh, what did I say, John 20, 23, 28, yeah. John the Baptist, he said, you yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ. Because they asked him, is he the Christ? I am not the Christ. But I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Jesus and the church, the body of believers. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly 
because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes, oh, I don't need to go on from there. He must increase, but I must decrease. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying there is, the bride, she gets excited when she hears the bridegroom voice. Mm -hmm. And he's saying it's the same with the believers. They get excited when they hear the voice of That's Jesus. Right. And, and they're asking like questions, the are you the Christ? In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to understand before we go further in, I'm just laying a foundation here, before we go further into this ancient Jewish traditional wedding, that there are there, were, there was, and, and uh, perhaps still practiced today, I wouldn't know. I know you come from a Jewish background, but I don't think you know this detail. There are four main parts to the Jewish wedding. Four main parts. Now, the first part is called the Kedushim. Hmm. Not the Kedar, Kedashim. <laughs> I don't think they know much about Jewish weddings. But anyway, it's the Kedushim. It's spelled K I D D U S H I N. And the Kedushim is a ritual of sealing the engagement. We're going to look at this in practice just now. Then after the Kedushim comes the Ketubah. Ketubah. Also spelled with a K, K E T U B A H. And the ketubah is the marriage contract. The marriage contract today, some people that get married out of community of property, some get married with an anti nuptial contract. Here they got married with this ketubah, and you're going to see more about this marriage contract as well. Just now, there's only one marriage contract that I know of when it comes to the bridegroom and the bride. Hallelujah. And this is the marriage contract. Amen. But we'll see that Thank in you, Lord. Minute. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. And then after the ketubah is a mohar. Mohar, not mohair, mohar. My spelling uh, corrector changed it to mohair. <laughs> it's mohar. M-O-H-A-R. M-O-H-A-R. And the mohar is the price that was paid for the bride. <laughs> I'm getting it already. The price that was paid for the bride. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Then last was a nisuin. N-I-S-U apostrophe I-N. And Nusuin comes from the verb Nasa. Nasa means to lift up, to bear, or to carry away. In Jesus' name. You might be already getting a picture of all this. In Jesus' name. Okay. Now in the traditional Jewish wedding of ancient times, the man or the groom would select his bride to be the bride the, the man or the groom he would select his bride to be now you're going to get a little bit of revelation here now uh, john 15 and verse 16 jesus he said now i've just read to you that the, in the ancient jewish tradition uh, well, traditional wedding the groom he would choose or select his bride but in john chapter 15 and verse 16 guess what jesus says he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Thank you, Lord. The bridegroom, Hallelujah. he chose you. Thank you, Jesus. The bride. Thank you, Lord. You did not choose me, but I chose you Thank and appointed you, you that you should go and bear Thank fruit. You. Thank you, Jesus. And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he would give you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 14, Jesus said there, Many are called, but few are chosen. That's right. Many are called, but few are chosen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And if you've got Jesus in your heart, if you're a born again believer, if you're a lover of Jesus, and he's a lover of your soul, make no mistake, you were called and you are chosen. Now, in this situation of this ancient traditional Jewish wedding, the groom and the bride, they would, they would first sit together at a table and they would drink from a single cup, or, yes, yeah, single cup of wine, chalice, I suppose, of, 
wine. Now, why was it a single one that they would share? You might think it's all romantic, all nice, we're going to share the glass. But that single glass signified unity and right. oneness. That's right. Amen. And Jesus Amen. picked up the cup. <laughs> he picked up the cup. Lord. Unity and oneness when they drank this cup of wine. And here the wine represents the blood. Hmm. The blood. Now let's just go to, quickly to John chapter 6. Hallelujah. John, I'm trying to watch the time and already it's sailing past. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Are you there? Verse 54, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will thank raise him up Jesus, oh, you, excuse me, on the last day. Mm -hmm. Verse 55, for my flesh is food indeed you, and my blood you, is Jesus. drink indeed. And verse 56, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood you, abides thank in you, me Father. and I in thank him. You, now he's not a cannibal. Right. He doesn't expect us to be accountable. What he's talking about is consuming Jesus. Right. Consuming right. Jesus into your life. There's many, many people who say, I believe. You know what they do? They talk the talk, but they don't walk they don't the talk. talk. They, they can't be bothered with church. They can't be bothered with this. And they make excuses for the sin. And God must get himself up to date and all the rest of it. They are not consuming the truth of Jesus. Right. Amen. But let's move on. And so we read here that Jesus uh, told us that we need to drink his blood. And this wine represents the blood. So they sealed their engagement like this. They sealed their engagement and the sealing of that engagement is known as the Kedushin. They call it the betrothal. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, th that's when they actually got engaged. The wedding wasn't consummated. Mm -hmm. They got engaged. Mm -hmm. The condition, which was a betrothal. And when we drink the wine, let me tell you, when we drink the wine in remembrance of the price that Jesus paid for our salvation, we do that when we take communion. And we, and he said, whenever you drink of this or eat of this, yes. do it in remembrance yes. of me. And we do it in remembrance of Jesus. We're remembering the price that was paid for our salvation. And the betrothal of the church is then sealed. Mm. Praise God. And this is what happened when Jesus drank from the cup with his disciples at the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. Together they were, and we have also entered into a new co covenant or marriage contract with Jesus, which has got to be ratified. It's got to be, what was the word I used earlier on? It's got to be the cup of consummation. It's got to be consummated. In Jesus' mighty, awesome, and powerful name. Hallelujah. Praise God. So together they were, and we have entered into this new covenant or marriage contract. Now in the Jewish betrothal, this was their marriage contract where they laid out what was expected from the bride, the body of believers, what was expected from the bride, and what the bride could expect from the bridegroom <laughs> in that marriage. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Powerful stuff, this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. I've got written down here Mark 26, and it's wrong. Mark 26. Mark only goes up to 16. 16, that's right. Maybe it's Matthew 26. Let's have a look and see. Matthew 26, 26 to 29, or maybe 16. Now it's Matthew 26. And it says there, Matthew 26, and verse 26, and it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, yes. and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Yes. Then he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Mm. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it in you, with you, 
in my Father's wow. kingdom. Amen. The consummation. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the good news of this gospel, this is our contract. This is our condition. <laughs> in Jesus' wow, name. It is. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The drinking of wine, which represents blood, sealed their engagement. And the shedding of blood seals all of God's covenants. Read it in the, in the Old God. Testament. When you go through, all God's covenants are sealed by the shedding of blood. The shedding of the blood of the Lamb seals our covenants. When he went to the cross and he shed his blood, that, was us, that sealed the covenant of grace with us. And that gives us the right to confess the blood as we apply it to our lives. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And the actual marriage covenant is sealed in the natural, is sealed when the marriage is consummated, when the groom enters the bride and her hymen is broken. Catch this. And her hymen is broken and blood is shed over her groom. It's powerful stuff, this, eh? That's why God doesn't like us to keep on getting married and getting married and getting married. How many times have we got to shed blood to seal the covenant? <laughs> In Jesus' name. Amen. That's why if you've been married and you aren't a believer and then you become a believer, you were divorced and you're getting married again, just get before God and ask Him to That's forgive right. you for the Amen. mistakes Amen. and ask Amen. Him to help Thank you. you and let me Thank tell you, He'll make you brand new. Lady, Absolutely. He'll make you a virgin That's again. Right. And when Absolutely. you get married to the man that He gives you out of the church, your hymen will break. In Jesus' in name. Jesus and the blood will be spilled in that contract. The, 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 the covenant will be sealed in Thank Jesus' Jesus. name. It is written that God created them, male and female. It has to be male and female. Yes. For the male to enter the woman. Yeah, yeah. Yes. For the male to enter the woman, yes. for her hymen to be broken, yes. and for her to shed blood over her. It is written that God created them, male and female. And only a male can enter a woman and split her hymen so she sheds blood over him. A female can't do it with a female, and a male can't do it with a male. Okay. So it is written that God created them, male and female, and for this reason, a man will leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This marriage contract was presented during the ritual of Kedushin by the bridegroom and it was called the Ketubah, as I explained to you earlier on. Earlier on. The Ketubah listed all the responsibilities and obligations expected from the bride and the groom. So when we got married, okay, if we were doing it the traditional Jewish way, with the Ketubah, our contract would have listed all the responsibilities of the, and obligations we would have one to another. But we marry in Jesus, hallelujah. Thank and he's you, given us this Lord. contract. Thank and this you. tells us of all the responsibilities. This tells us of all the obligations on our part and all the, on his part as well. That might sound heavy to you, but his obligations are his promises. That's right. And all his promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. And he is not a man that he should lie. That's right, nor the son of man that he should change his word. Amen, that's right. Word is his word. Hallelujah. So the ketubah is what Christ presents to his church, which is his word. So we've looked at the kedushin, we've looked at the ketubah, and now we're going to look at this, uh, the, the mohar, the price that was paid. Then there was the mohar, which is the price the groom was willing, willing to pay. Hmm. Over here in Africa, they call it, what is it? Labola. 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 Some, some, some of them have to pay a lot of labola. So many oxen and yeah. what have you. I can tell you, when it's in the natural like that, they should rather call it tombola. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> but this is mohar, which was a price the groom was willing to pay for his bride. The bride was purchased at a price 
And the price was what the groom was willing to pay. <laughs> Hallelujah. The groom was willing to pay. Yet whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us, it tells us in Thank Romans. The he was willing to pay the price for us. Thank Father, if it's possible, Hallelujah. take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And he had blood sweating mm -hmm. down over his face. In Jesus' name. He was prepared to pay that price for us. The greater the price, the greater the value the groom placed on the bride. Now, you need to know that this price that God paid for your soul was great. No greater love is man than he should lay down his life for his brother. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no greater price was paid than that which Christ paid as he paid the ultimate price. Gave his life. Gave up his spirit for us. And that's the more. So now these are the three main aspects at this stage that we've looked at. We've looked at the Kedushim, the ritual of sealing the engagement. We've looked at the Ketubah, the marriage contract. And we've looked at the Moar, the price that was paid. Hallelujah. And after this initial betrothal, the engagement, the couple were considered legally married, but the marriage was not yet consummated. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to see, you're going to get some revelation here about the, the rapture now, mm. in Jesus' name. Now after that, the groom would depart from the table with a promise to go and prepare a place for his bride in his father's house, promising to return to remove her for himself. What does John chapter 14 say? John chapter 14. Scripture I often use when I'm doing, for, for, uh, doing funerals to comfort the people. But this is what Jesus is saying. John chapter 14. Verse 2. Well, verse 1. He says, Lord, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. Remember the groom? He leaves her after that. After the, the more, the price has been paid. He leaves her. And he goes to his father's house to prepare a place. And here Jesus says, I have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. It's the same promise. It's the same promise of the bridegroom in the Jewish traditional, ancient traditional wedding that the bridegroom gave to his wife, Jesus is giving to us. Can you see the illustration of that traditional Jewish wedding? Hallelujah. Now the bride would veil her face while she waited. Catch this one now. I must first say that the groom, he would return to his father's house where he would begin to prepare a special room, a mansion, for the couple to live in after he had received her. Then the bride, she would be gone, the bride would fail her face while she waited and she chose ten virgins who were thrilled about their engagement. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 25. She would choose ten virgins. Yeah who were thrilled about her engagement. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. This is Jesus speaking. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Yeah. The five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, no anointing. No relationship. No consuming Jesus through the bread and the wine. 
But the wise girls, that virgins, took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom was delayed, while the bridegroom was delayed, you see why the bridegroom was delayed just yeah. now. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, yes. in the midnight hour, when no one expected, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Mm. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Mm. But the foolish one said to the wise one, Please give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise virgins answered, saying, No, we can't give you any, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy some for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And while... And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. You've got to be ready in season yeah. and out of season. No, yeah. Doesn't no, matter how you're no. feeling, no, doesn't no. matter what anger you've got towards God, no. you better make sure you're ready. Yes. Listen, Don't God is walk. waiting, God is there. Can I tell you what can I tell you why the bridegroom was delayed? Because Jesus, he told them. He said, no one knows the hour when I'm going to come back. Only the Father knows the hour. In the Jewish traditional wedding, I thought we were going to see it just now, but when the groom went to his father's house to prepare a place, he didn't even know when he was going to come. He only came when the Father saw he was ready, and the Father said, go. Released him, yeah. Let him go. Released him. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. She was to be prepared at all times, the bride, not knowing, and we need to be prepared at all times. Are you ready? Are you ready? What are you going to do if Jesus comes tonight and you're not ready? It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Get on your knees. Ask God to forgive you. Invite Jesus into your heart. That's right. Amen. Right now. Amen. Tonight could be too late. Amen. In Jesus' name. Mercy. She was to be prepared at all times, not knowing when. He, the bridegroom, would return with garments that were clean and without spots or wrinkle. With garments that were clean uh, and without spots or wrinkle. And I don't know if you remember when we read first earlier on from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. And it said there, when I can get to it, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And there he came back with garments that were clean and without spot or wrinkle, so she could be presented to himself. And then let's just quickly look at Luke chapter 21. It's important that we look at all these scriptures because I want you to see that I have been eating too much pizza or sucking boiled sweets and telling you a load of junk. Luke chapter 21 and verse 36, Jesus is speaking. He says, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things. What things? The things that occur during the time of the tribulation. That you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And then in Revelations chapter 16. Hallelujah. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're catching something. I hope you haven't got cross and offended with me because of some of the teaching. But it's the truth. I can I can only preach what God's got in his Bible. And that's what Christian, Christian preaching is all about. Yeah. In Jesus' name. I don't care who you are, what you're doing, what sin you're in. We love you. Mm -hmm. And God loves you. That's and right. God wants to bring you to that place that you're ready for him. That's should right. he come Amen. tonight. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. And in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15, Jesus is talking again. He said, Behold, I am coming as a thief. <laughs> Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. 
you got to make sure you got on the, the cloak of, of, of righteousness and the garment of salvation. you got to make sure you've got your robes on. In Jesus' name, they're synonymous, spiritual synonyms. In Jesus' name, you've got to make sure you dress your clothes in the blood of Jesus. You're clothed in Jesus Christ. Now, as I said to you just now, the bride never knew when her groom would return, and neither did the groom. The bride never knew when her groom was coming back, and the groom also himself. He didn't know. He's gone to his father's house. He's preparing a room for her. He's preparing a place for her. And at the right time, when his father tells him, he is going to return. But the groom, he never knew when he was going to return. And in Matthew chapter 24, and verse 36, Jesus says, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels, but only my father. Only my father. The father of the groom, he would determine when all things were ready for his son to secretly receive his bride and bring her to the place he had prepared for her. Now, this is quite a powerful thing here. Only the father knew. So God, he's going to see when the time is ready, when all the prophecies are being fulfilled, the peace treaty and all these other things. And he's going to say, okay, son, go. Mm. And Jesus is going to come on the clouds. And those who are sleeping, Jesus is going to be raised up. And then we're going to get snatched away. That's right. Amen. And we're going to get snatched away in our relatives, our friends, our neighbors, and the other people that are not born again mm. are going to get left yes. behind. Yes. They're not going to get a chance no. because it's going it's to be done. Time. God says, and it'll be done in secret. Probably at night, maybe. Who knows? It will be done in secret, and suddenly they're going to look around and say, Oh, where's Pastor Bob gone? Yeah. Yes, that's true, that's true. Where's Leonora gone? Yeah. Mm. Sure. When the father finally gave permission for his son to receive his bride, he would often send a group of men to the bride's house to announce, The bride is coming! Make yourself ready. And in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 6, Jesus said, And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. <laughs> Snatched away into the clothes. Sure. Out to meet the bridegroom. In Jesus' name. Powerful stuff is. I get so excited about this. How can people say the Bible is just a book that was written by men? When you've got so much. Oh, oh, Lord. Then the next stage, the last stage of the wedding was called the Nisuin. And it was the consummation stage. When we're coming to an end, I'm going to get it all in. The consummation stage. The word Nisuin comes from the word Nasa, which means to lift up, bear, to carry away. I've already told you that. The ancient custom describes what the New Testament reveals will happen when the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, this ancient custom of the Jewish wedding, shows us what the New Testament is revealing to us. I've been reading it to you. Will happen when the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, suddenly re returns to receive us and we are choo, snatched away in the blinking of an eye to meet him in the air and to be taken to his father's house. His father's house. I'm going to keep on preaching and if it's, I've got to cut it off, I'll just put it on for next week. Hallelujah. Now I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians. Very important scripture. 1 Thessalonians, after Philippians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17. And it says there, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, snatched yes. away, that word literally means, Absolutely. snatched away up together with them, into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now as the groom receives his bride, he takes her back to his father's house. Jesus takes us, he snatches us up, and we're raptured, and he takes us back to his father's house. Hmm. And he takes us back there to consummate the marriage. A group of close friends would follow the bride and, and with the ten oil lamps. Mm. And this illustrated the parable of the ten virgins, which we read just now mm. in Matthew chapter 25, and verse 10. For the sake of time, we won't get, go back there in case we get sidetracked. Now we come to the actual consummation. Now the couple, they went to the father's house and they entered into the place that was prepared for them, which was known as the wedding chamber. And they spent seven consecutive days there together to consummate their marriage. They were on honeymoon <laughs> in the father's house for seven days. Hallelujah. Remember, seven represents the day of perfection. After seven days, they returned to join their guests. Seven days. Just remember, the tribulation will be for seven years. Mm. After the beginning, the bridegroom Jesus will return and take away his bride to a place which he has prepared for her in his father's house. We, as believers, as the body of Christ, as the church, as the bride of Christ, we will be at the marriage supper. Must be. We're his bride. In Jesus' name. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19 again. Hallelujah. Just to get the confirmation of that. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. And he said, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife has made herself ready. Are you ready? Remember I said to you. Are you yes, ready? Yes. Amen. Oh, you, you can't be perfect. Mm -hmm. You can't be perfect. But you must have Jesus in your heart. You must have consumed his body, consumed his blood. You must be saturated with Jesus. You know, the Bible speaks about the three baptisms. Baptism into Jesus, baptism into water, baptism in the Holy Spirit. That word baptism means full immersion. Full immersion into Jesus. Full immersion in the water. Full immersion in the Holy Spirit. Full immersion right. into Amen. Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will drink of that fourth and final cup of consummation. And this is the cup that Jesus said he would drink. Remember I read it to you just now? He would drink anew with us in his kingdom. I'm not going to turn there, but I read it to you from Matthew chapter 26 and verse 29. Now listen to me. Prophetically, the body of Christ has drunk from three of the four cups. We're busy with the cup of redemption now. When you got saved, from three of the four cups represented at the Passover. And the fourth cup is waiting us at the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. In the ancient traditional wedding, the witnesses would wait outside the bridal chamber and the groom would present the bridal sheets with spots of blood on it to prove that his bride was a virgin. We're virgins because Jesus paid the price for our sin. Thank we're not dirty. We're, we're, we're white in the snow. We're washed in the blood of Jesus. Jesus, the bride, the church, is a virgin because he carried the cost of her sin on himself to the cross. Hallelujah. And the cup that we will drink of at the marriage supper represents his blood that was shed, which makes us worthy, worthy, worthy to enter into the wedding chamber prepared for the bridegroom and his father's house. Let me tell you, there is no other way to God but by the blood Hallelujah. of Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. He's proposed to you. He sent people out to invite you and you refused to come. Mm -hmm. And if they went back and they told Jesus, you refused to come. So then he sent them out in the highways and the byways to invite others to come. He's been inviting you, inviting you to the banquet, the marriage supper of the Lamb 
He's inviting you. If you're not born again and you're listening to this, He is inviting you. All this stuff may sound like a science fiction story, whatever it is. It's truth. I've proved it to you. I've proved it to you. Let me just tell you this. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. And you need to surrender yourself to Jesus today. Surrender yourself to Jesus today. Close your eyes and invite him into your life. Tell him you recognize him as a son of God and you need him in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. You see, Jesus said, unless we eat of his body and drink of his blood, we're not worthy. And what he was saying is we need to consume him. These elements remind us of him and the work of the cross, what he did. And so we eat of it thankfully. Thankfully. In Jesus' name. The bread represents his body. And the Bible says by the beating that he took we are healed. Healed from the crown of our heads to the very sole of our feet. Feet in Jesus' mighty name. Let's eat together. And then let's drink of the grape juice that is an element representing his blood as we consume from the cup of salvation in Jesus' name. It's going to go off, I think. Just pray quickly, Pet, because I think the thing's full of it. Father, we bring every precious person before you, Father. You Amen. know their needs, Father. You'll supply all their needs. Praise to God. Riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Father God, by the stripes of Jesus that we're healed and made whole, Father God. Amen. We thank you, Father God, that you'll supply new jobs, financial breakthrough, Father yes. God, divine alignment, divine intervention, miracle signs and wonders, Amen. Father God. Amen. We just thank you, Lord, for our listeners, every single one of them, Father, yes. that you'll do mighty miracles you'll provide you, for them. We thank you for breakthrough. Thank in every you, area of their lives and our lives in Jesus' mighty name, Thank Father. You, the Lord bless and keep you, make his face shine yes, upon you, be gracious to you and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Expect the Lord to come through for you. He's not dead, Amen. he's heard your cry. Hallelujah. And he'll give you the desires of your heart yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hope you enjoyed the service. Hope you got some revelation from the word. In Jesus' mighty name. Our contact details are coming up just now. So until the next time, God, God bless, bless you. you. And Bye. we love and pray for you daily, Amen. family, friends, Amen. relatives, listeners. Amen.